Hi, welcome to Arty Crafty Alchemy. Today we are looking at the Couture Creations glass mat for mixed media in conjunction with Art Shed Angel Lu Lucy Capino. Not sure how you say that. I'm the Arty Crafty Alchemist. Let's get started. My box is a little beat up, battered around because I've had this since Christmas. This, this was my Christmas gift from my sister. Comes in some protective plastic. There are 10 silicon feet on the back and the printing is on the back surface so that when you're working on the front it won't be affected. The dimensions of the mat are 39.5 by 29.8 centimeters or 15.5 by 11.7 inches. The measurements are in centimeters. Kitty says hello. This mat is $21.50 on Blue Edge Crafts. The travel mat with couch is $52 on Amazon. I'm trying to see if anyone in Australia has it. It's cheapest on Amazon from what I can see. Scrap Dragon has the travel size at $70. The full size is $75 so in a lot of places so I would not bother with that. But obviously with COVID and things it's hard to source a lot of things. So this is a lot cheaper than the glass media mat. There are a couple of things I have noticed straight off the bat. I have a couple of nicks of color in the back and I've only just taken the plastic off. And there's a couple of little bits of damage on the back already. The printing is not square. It's not lined up properly on the back. So there's only a small amount of edge here where we have a lot more edge up the top. The first and last squares are not one centimetre, which can be a bit annoying, but let's see what that work surface is in inches. So for this one, it is almost nine and three quarters across. It's approximately 24 centimetres across. The undertone of both sides has a slight bluish tint to it. So it's not a pure white mixing surface like the media mats that I've seen. Not that I've used a media mat yet, but that is one glaring difference that I've noticed is that that is not a white colour. So maybe if I add something, this is a white piece of paper and as you can see this has a bluish cast to it. So it will affect your mixing colours. If you I have grabbed a range of things to try on this so we can see how it goes. What I might do is actually put a small amount of Nouveau drops on there. This is the glow in the dark, but I'm just going to make a couple of spots and we can see how easy they are to get off. The slick surface means that they are actually sinking a bit lower than normal. I don't know how that got dirty, but that doesn't matter. It's not affecting anything. Just grabbed a random water brush and I think I'll start with some ink pads. I'm just going to smoosh down some color. Oh, I forgot this one was almost empty. I keep thinking I've bought a refill for Lucky Clover, but I haven't. I'm just going to spritz them with a little water. And I'm going to colour these leaves. This is Renault Art watercolour paper, 100% cellulose. It's very smooth. I'm not really a fan of it, to be honest. But I got it super cheap and just thought I would try it out. I'm also not a big fan of this water brush, but it was the first one I could find. As you can see, I can pick up the ink quite nicely to lay it down. I'm just using a very shoddy water brush right now, so it's not working quite the way I wanted it to. Quite easy to wipe the ink off. Set that aside to dry. Just grabbed a piece of white paper for the distress inks. I am going to try some ink smooshing. I have wilted violet, peacock feathers and picked raspberry. Unfortunately, this cardstock doesn't want to cooperate. I'm going to try a lot more water. This paper just tends to soak it straight in. It's made a pretty interesting background nonetheless, so I'll set that aside to dry. And now I'll try that again. This time I'm just going to try some super smooth white that I've got. I'm going to just soak up the rest and do a 
pretty pale background with what I have left. I'll set them to a side to dry. Next I thought I would try some paste. I have some Nouveau Glacier paste in Garden Envy. Okay, I'm just going to... Oh no! <laughs> Oops, I forgot there was stuff there so I'm just going to leave that on there to dry. I'm going to lift this off, put this aside to dry. Beside me I have a container of water so that I can put my stencils straight into them. Give it a spritz with water and again that has wiped straight off. See how it goes when it dries. I'm going to bring this back across. I'm going to Grab a small amount of the embellishment mousse. Make sure to clean off in between colours. I have citrus green, custard cream, and coastal surf. I have a Royal and Langnickel Royal Night number eight that I'm going to try turning this into a paint with. I'm not being very precise here at all bouncing off some of the colour and then I'm going to go back into the custard cream and lighten the top. If you don't have pearl paints this is a good way to make pearl paints if you have embellishment mousses. It's not quite as green as I wanted so I'm just going to grab some of the green with a little bit less water. Actually mainly only grabbed light embellishment mousses from Tonic because I have a lot of the Inca Golds and they didn't have a lot of pale colours in them so I grabbed a lot of the pale colours of the embellishment mousses. I'm just going to actually smoosh that up into a paint. If you just want a small amount of sparkle on something you could just use the tiniest amount and thin it down a lot and you'll still get a lot of shine. Now I'm going to turn this one into a paint. And I think I'm going to need another paintbrush. I don't have a water pail here so this will make it easier and I'm just going to use the coastal surf and then I'm going to pick up a small amount of yellow and I'm going to repeat that until the whole flower is done. I mixed a small amount of the yellow and the green into the blue to get the colour to do the stem and I also added some into the leaves just to darken them up a little bit. I'm going to wipe all this off. My paper towel is damp. I've moved a small amount up to the top to dry and see how it goes. And I will put that aside to dry. I've used some glacier paste, now I'm going to use some glitter paste. This is Peridot. The glitter paste you need to work really fast because stencil tends to be hard to clean if you don't get it in the water straight away. So I'm just going to peel that straight up and toss it into my container beside me. I'm just going to scoop a little bit of this up and again stick it up here. I'm going to put that one aside to dry. The wet stuff is easily coming off with a damp paper towel. Next I have some Yupo paper and I also have this tool. I haven't had a chance to buy the Tim Holtz one which is bigger. This is a photo one and I actually got this from Daiso. It cost me $2.80 Australian. So now I have some alcohol inks and I'm going to try Tina, Aqua and Pool going to drop a drop of that on there and let that dry. I'm going to place some alcohol on there. It's isopropyl alcohol. Then I'm going to add drops of colour in. Then I'm going to add some blending solution. Ink is all running <laughs> in one direction which is not what I wanted it to do. So the colours I've used are aqua, pool and patina. Set that one aside to dry. Most of the alcohol ink has come off without any extra product. I'm just going to add a couple of drops of hand sanitizer. 
just to pick up any excess color. This time I'm going to try eggplant. And then I've added some sterling oxidative. Oh shoot, I didn't realize there was two sheets there. I'm gonna try this again. One alcohol, I'm going to throw a couple of drops of eggplant on there. I'm going to try moving the eggplant around this time. And then I'm going to throw some alcohol on there, alcohol blending solution, and some rose gold. I'll set that one away, side to dry. It's been a couple of weeks since I did this. I put on the equivalent of some glossy accents. I only use it as a glue because it's not as smooth as glossy accents, but I can't remember what brand it is. It's one I got in England. And Lord knows where I've put the bottle in the last couple of weeks. I've also added some Nouveau Stone Drops just to see how they reacted and they just move around all on their own so that was nice and easy to get off. The Nouveau Glow Drops come off pretty easily except this one got a bit smooshed so I'm going to have to work it off. I really should have looked for a scraper before I did this. I wasn't too careful making that one so that one actually has an air bubble in it. And now we've got a kitty. I gessoed this piece and I also gessoed another piece on here. This is the leftovers from gessoing the chipboard piece for a canvas that I made. It was another elephant from Scrapbooking and Craft. What I thought I would do first is I would spray some of this on here. This, this is just all leftover bits from all the panels I made. I thought I would spray with water first and see what I could get clean. Gesso is coming off really nicely and easily. Not much elbow grease required. To be honest, I was a bit worried about the gesso. I think that's glue. A lot of the mediums are coming off very easily. Now remember, this glitter gel sticks to stencils really easily and is hard to get off. So the fact that it comes off glass nice and easy is good. This is the base here paste. And it is coming off just with water as well. I'm quite surprised. Even the... Alcohol ink that was under there is coming off as well. I think there's a few little bits that would benefit from some hand sanitizer. So once I get this cleaned off, then I'll grab that. And let's see if I can just, there we go. I just pulled that off. I just pulled the clear stuff off with a fingernail. There's a little bit of residue. So I'm just going to grab some hand sanitizer. A more heavy duty piece of paper towel. All clean, good as new. You wouldn't even know that I'd already used it really. The only thing I might consider doing, because I move my mat a lot and sometimes I need a bigger space, especially if I'm making sets of drawers and things from Kaiser Craft, is adding some gel medium or something on the back of this just to seal this in. This is not covered with anything. I'm not sure if the Tim Holtz mat is covered in anything. As I said, this is available in Australia from places like Blue Edge Crafts. Craft Giraffe have this mat for $20. Wow. It's the Couture Creations glass mat for mixed media. Wow. Kitty wow. is saying hello, but she can't stay. Over there, Kitty. I did make some projects with the panels that I made. It's one of the alcohol ink backgrounds. I made this grateful for all you do card. I used some of my foiled sentiment strips from Spellbinders and I used this stamp from Kaisercraft except of course I can't find the packaging to tell you what it is called right now <laughs> but I think it was the first time I'd used it and I've used it straight down this edge. I second generation stamped one of the little flourishes and then I stamped it down the bottom and I didn't like how square it looked because of that edge. So I very carefully inked up this portion and used my thumb to smudge some of the colour and then I lined that up and stamped it in that direction. And on that card I also used the Paper Roses stitched frames. The Happy Mother's Day from this card is from Lawn Fawn stamp set. I think it was Mum and Me. I pre-embossed this for another card. I was trying to match a embossing powder to my work and this was a spare one. So, so I just had it in the same jar. I have all my foiled sentiment strips and these were the flowers and the background that I did in the video. 
really wanted to stick this sentiment strip on top of here and just make one card but I really like to stretch my supplies and the things I've made so I made myself make a two for card I will end up adding some gems or some drops to these just to give them a little pick me up the wonderful die cuts are from crafty potential as is the you are so again i've used a stitched rectangle from paper rose and lastly i used my other set of flowers and this background with the spellbinders shape abilities guys and i have just trimmed this one down so it sits along the side it's this stamp set here i use the i love you so much SSS I assume is Simon Says Stamp and Messages for Every Day. I got this off Facebook group so didn't have the packaging. These are the cards I've made with some of the panels that I created. I still have more panels to use out. Mostly alcohol ink ones because once I start alcohol inking I get a bit carried away. I still have all six of these backgrounds to use but the mat has come up nice and clean i've not been able to find the measurements for the tim holtz glass media mat travel size i am curious to see size difference between this and the travel glass media mat because i know this is much much smaller than the full size tim holtz media mat if you're considering buying this let me know below if this review was helpful please hit the like button subscribe to see more content like this and hit the bell notification to know when new videos come out thank you all for watching and i'll see you all next time bye for now